Greetings. Welcome to my Revit review of floors and flat roofs, in which we will begin to build the Barcelona Pavilion. I'm going to flip over to my review sheet. So, starting at the top here, there are a couple important abbreviations we definitely have to get to know when we're talking, looking at elevations. So, that is BO for bottom of and TO for top of, and we'll talk more about these, but we'll see these in elevation. So, um, in Revit, in order to begin placing our floors and our flat roofs, we need to um, assign some elevations first. Everything, all floors, all many, many, most objects in Revit are, are basically tied to different elevations. So for our pavilion, we're going to work with four different elevations. We're going to start at the base, down at the sidewalk, which is at minus four foot eight. Um, this is all relative to the finished floor of the pavilion, which is at zero. We, we're just assigning that as zero, zero. Um, we have the pool floor, which is one foot below that. And then again, back to the base or the sidewalk, which is four foot eight below that. And then above that, we have the ceiling. So let me just bring up a model here. So we have four, eight, one, zero, and nine feet. So here's a nice looking wood model of it. So here's the pavilion floor. We're calling that zero, zero. If we walk down the stairs and end up on the sidewalk, we're calling that minus four foot eight. We are calling the bottom of the pool floor here where we could stand minus one foot. This model has it drawn like it's an actual swimming pool. I'm quite sure it's not in real life. And there's another little pool tucked in over here. Um, so we're just going to make that a foot deep from this zero zero point. And then we have the roof, which we put at um, nine feet. The bottom of the ceiling is at nine feet. Okay, so it's important to note that it's not the top of the ceiling, it's the bottom of the ceiling. Okay, so the four foot eight here is eight seven foot steps to get from the sidewalk up to the finished floor of the pavilion. And the pool we already said is one foot. Okay, so therefore we will set in elevation, elevation markers, and rename them to look like such. Okay. Let's just blow that up and quickly see what we want that to look like. All right, so there's our sidewalk, 4-8, our pool, minus 1, mm -hmm. and our finished floor at 0, and our um, ceiling at 9. All right, so let's, why don't we just jump into that? Why don't we just jump into Revit here? So this is the file that I am providing you with, the Barcelona, um, Barcelona Pavilion Floor Plan. 2020 is the name of the file. And we have just opened it up. It is the only file that I have open up right now. We come here to see our open windows, and that's the only one. The floor plan, level one, says right there. Floor plan, it says right there. So, as I've mentioned, we want to open up just the, um, not too many, just just what we need. Let's open up, um, let's open up the, let's see if we want to be facing south. Let's open up the south elevation. And here, so it comes loaded already with two levels. Uh, and let's um, let's just start here. So let's call, um, so zero, zero, that will be our, I'm going to stick with the names, that will be our finished floor level. So I'm just going to double click on the text and make this finished floor. And would we like to rename the corresponding views? Yes, we would. So this is level one, which we see right here in our project browser. And upon saying yes, this will become finished floor. There we have finished floor, and then we have a ceiling plan associated with it as well. Level two will be our bottom of ceiling. So double click on the text, B period, O period ceiling. And we want that to be, yes, we'll rename them, and we're going to move that to 9 feet. Okay, good. Then <clears throat> we want to set additional levels. LL is the um, keyboard shortcut, or we come to the Architecture tab down here to Datum, and we can bring in Level. So now it's ready to insert a level. We're going to be coming down here. And I am going to pay attention to this dash line that is being created once I align nicely there, because that's what I want. Actually, I'm going to start down the other side, I think. Let's do that. So there's my dash line. I'm not going to care about this 12 foot yet, or I'm not going to worry about trying to get that exact. I just wanted to get lined up neatly. I could easily change the numbers. 
So one click, come down here, find that dashed line again, and click again. So pretty easy. And this we are going to make the, um, did I call it the top of the pool? Let's see, just pool. So this is the pool floor. We'll just call it pool. And we'll rename, and it is minus one foot. So I don't mess around with uh, trying to get that precise the first time. And then this is always a problem when this text piles up on top of each other. When I click <clears throat> on the on the elevation, the datum level, I see this little little crisscross right there. Hard to see. It doesn't get any bigger when you zoom in, unfortunately. But when I when I hover on it, it says add elbow. I'm gonna click on that and it just kind of broke the line there. <clears throat> and I can do the same here. Click there's the add elbow, and this elbow is going up, not down. Finish floor. Here we are. So it's all buried under there. It's right there. You can see. So some things just don't reveal themselves till you're on top of it, which is kind of annoying. So I'm just going to click right on that and then bring that right up. Just try to keep, keep things organized. Okay. And one more for the base. So let's come back to level. There's my dash line, click, another dash line, and we said this was minus four foot eight. And once I drop it, I'm just hitting escape to finish it. Minus four foot eight, pop up there. One click, and we'll make that the base. And name the corresponding views. So that looks good. And over in floor plans now, we have one for every level that we've created, bottom of ceiling, base, finished floor, pool, and there's a site one as well. Okay. So now we have our elevation set. Let's go back to our cheat sheet, and they look something like that. Good. Okay. Um, so we want to use generic materials for the floors and the walls. Okay, we'll talk more about that momentarily. Floors should be one foot thick and walls should be eight inches thick. All right, we're not going to get into walls yet, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, the pavilion's roof could be a floor as well. Note that floors are placed below the corresponding elevation marker. Therefore, we need to offset those roofs a foot, okay? So, and we'll review this when we get closer to it. <clears throat> but basically what that's saying... Let's just read that one more time. The pavilion um, note, floors are placed below the corresponding elevation marker. Okay, So what that means is when the floor comes in, it's going to be down here below that elevation marker. That's naturally where floors go. Um, we're going to get into ceilings later, so I'm just going to keep with simple floors and just practice them on this. And, and all, all that's saying is that the floor is going to come in down here. And since we're treating it as a, ceil a roof, we wanted to get up here, so when we say, when we tell the floor, call it the ceiling, go to the bottom of ceiling level, it's going to appear down here, and then we're just going to say it's, um, we're going to have to add some, add an offset to it so that it jumps up above. That's what that means, and we'll do that once we, once we get there. Okay, so floors, sketch-based objects must be drawn in two dimensions first in order to indicate the shape, and then we will review the trim commands. Okay. All right, so let us go to the floor plan. So now if we jump up here and we see what I have open, right now I have a floor plan and an elevation. Okay, so let's jump back to the floor plan, which is finished floor. And there's my underlay. Okay, so now we're back in the floor plan. So before jumping into the, um, the floors, I wanted to just draw a couple model lines up here and show you some of the trim commands. So model lines are here under the architecture tab, model lines, and they're just sketch elements. They're not really incorporated into models, but they're um, used to help um, kind of construction lines, I would call them. So I just drew a couple here so it's very simple, and they um, stick on, their, on, on the axes very nicely. And then when we come over to the modify tab here, um, modify tab down far right, so these are all our basic um, modify kind of trimming commands. These are all very much like CAD commands. So we have aligning, moving, offsetting, copying, rotating, um, and then here are the trim commands that I wanted to show you. Because a lot of um, elements in Revit, like floors, will be drawn with two-dimensional model lines and then, um, then converted into a three-dimensional object. 
So here we want to hit the um, go to the command first. So this is just a basic trim and we click on it. And now we could see down here in the command line, select the first line or wall to trim or extend. So this is just going to be very simple. Um, select two and extend and join them there at the corner. Then we have this little guy here. So trim extend a single element. So we click on that. So select the reference line. So that's where it's going. So that's right there. And we shoot it over. Or we could do, do it this way and we can select it as a cutting plane. And then on this side, we are, we are selecting the side that does not cut. So let's do that one more time. Select the line or the scissors, as I often say. <clears throat> and then we want to select the piece that we are going to keep, actually. So that's a little different from CAD. Um, and then we have this guy here where we have two lines connecting. So two or more going on. So we could shoot one over and then we could shoot this other one over. So just um, basic drafting tools, similar, very similar to CAD. Um, that might help when it comes to um, drafting two-dimensional pieces. Okay, so let's jump back into the um, review sheet and make sure we're covering everything. All right, so we talked about generic materials. We will get into that in a moment. Um, all right, so sketch-based objects, that's what's happening. We just reviewed some basic trim commands. So now we are going to architectural floors. We're going to get into sketch mode and then the existing work becomes an underlay. Okay, so let's just um, jump right into that. It's easier to just see it. All right, so architecture and floors here. So we have a couple different options. We have architectural, structural, floor by face, and floor by slab edge. We're going to stick with architectural. And once we go into a specific command like that, the modify, we jump over to the modify, and now it's create floor boundary. So this is all specific to the um, tool that we are in. Same here with this whole offset, um, this whole line here, anything that would be showing up there would be specific to what we're doing. So now we are in, in this sketch mode, right? I cannot select this thing. I cannot do anything except what it will allow me to do. And the only way to get out of this mode, when these two, um, I call it green light and red light, when those two things show up, um, the only way to get out of this is to to conclude with these buttons. So either you like what you did and you're going to um, give it the green light and um, get out of it and keep what you did. Or if you're not liking what's happening or you need to go open another view or something else needs to happen, then you're just going to give it the red light and get out of it. So here we are at the boundary line. So that's what we want. We're going to draw. Um, we'll get into, we could talk, we'll, we will talk about more things later. I'm not going to go over everything at, at this point, really just what we need. Um, but we're just basically drawing lines. So I'm just going to click on that and that's our line. If, if we had um, a, just a rectangular building, we could jump into that. Arcs obviously available. Um, this is pretty straightforward. We just need lines. Um, okay, so let us zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to move my property box over a little bit. And actually, let me just bring up this picture one more time. So what we're going to draw is this floor. I'm going to start with the zero zero floor. So it's going to get it's going to come around the stairs here, all the way down. This is the sidewalk, um, and then it will come back here out to the, this back part, in, over, down. And if we have this little piece drawn on the plan, we'll do that as well. So it's, if we start in the inside corner right here, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 lines, perhaps, if that's drawn there. Let's take a look. It is drawn there. Okay. So I'm going to, instead, I'm going to start here at the top right. Right here, I'm going to start. 1, 2, 3, 3, all right, so um, just make sure I know where I'm going. 1, 2, 3, and then I think I'm going to come in here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14, 15, 16 lines. I'm counting now, actually, 16 lines. Um, and this pavilion, just to note, which I noted in the introduction, was actually built taken down and then moved. So this this is not um this staircase is not part of its um current um configuration. This is the original. Right now there's a staircase there's a sidewalk here and this is the main entry. Um okay so let's just dig in and make this happen.
All right, and the dashed line is the ceiling, the roof above. Okay, so now I am on my boundary line. So this is now, this is also very important. So we want to make sure that we have the right type of floor. So now that I'm in floors, I'm coming over here and multiple types of floors are available um, or I could load new floors. Um, but 12 inch, 12 inch generic is what I want. That's what I want our floors to be. So that is good. And where is it going? That is the next big question. So it is going to the level of finished floor, and that is where I want it to go. And that is by default because I am on the finished floor level. Sometimes you will draw things on one level and actually make them go to another level. This is again all back to that issue of being able to see things. Sometimes you could see something easier in one level, but you want it to exist on another. So we are going to draw it on the finished floor, and we are going to send it to the finished floor. And we're not going to offset it. So we have, we have the opportunity to say you could go a foot above the finished floor, a foot below the finished floor. We're just going to let it go. So everything here is set up. Okay, so you want to review this before you start drawing anything. All right, so let's zoom in. So this is a JPEG roster image, so we cannot, it's not a CAD file. If we had a nice CAD file, we could easily, um, easily snap right to things, right, right to these corners, but we don't have that luxury. So we're just going to zoom in and get nice and tight to what we see here. So let's just zoom out, make sure we're going to the right place. Good all the way down so it looks like this part is, is where it stops i've never seen good pictures from this side of the pavilion good <clears throat> this is the pool that is the statue in the pool the iconic photograph that we've seen coming down the end and this image i scaled before um, giving you the file so I, I took down a dimension on another drawing of part of it, of, of this, and I scaled it right to that. So this is um, probably within a couple inches in, in terms of its accuracy. So all the way around, all the way around, and then we could close. So I'm just going to let that line stop a few inches short and as is good practice with CAD now I am going to come to the trim and let those join by way of that if I just brought it up there and this was a little bit out of alignment then this line would have been crooked so it's nice to use these commands to um, complete that so that is my um, floor plan so again got our 12 inch we're on the right level and I think I'm just going to give it the green light and see what happens and there it is so it just got set um, okay so let's take a look at our elevation so now this is critical critical um, part of the uh, process is it looks good in this view now we need to review it in other ones so let's take a look at our south elevation and there it is and it is just below our finished floor level right where we would expect to see it so that's very good um, we could select these the end of these chains drag it over and beyond and these also need to be dragged down so these are all locked in together and i could bring the whole lot of them right down there just by getting in on that little circle right there good all right so that looks pretty good <clears throat> and there's a little line right there that would represent um, the bump so we are looking, let's jump back to our finished floor. So we are looking from the south up, and that little line we would see is right there. So we see this line, we see, then we see that line coming right in where it breaks, and then we see this. Um, these are the elevation cameras, and I set this one up for your next project. You'll be setting up your own. Um, it comes with these elevation cameras, but when, after I blew up this, um, after I blew up this plan, I needed to move them around so this elevation camera is looking in this direction this guy is looking north this guy is looking he is looking south in order to create the north elevation he is looking north in order to create the south elevation looking west to create 
I'm sorry, looking east to create the west elevation. Okay. Um, and then we could also come back here. Don't forget about these guys. Very important. So now if we jump onto wireframe, now we could see our we could see our plan, our underlay again. Okay, so hidden line, we can't see through, and wireframe we can see through. Okay. All right, so now let's just jump back here. So now we have this floor in place, and what we need are the pools. Okay, I did not put the pools in at the same time. Okay, so here's our pool, and here is the select our floor. So I've selected the floor. Um, it doesn't really show up particularly well, but that's it, that blue line there. <clears throat> so once I select that floor, um, this is what becomes available. So editing the boundary is what we want. But before we, let's just talk about what we see here. So here's the pool. Here's the outside of our floor. And then I'm going to call this the 8-inch wall. So there's an 8-inch wall sitting there that um, I think we should offset and come in. And then we have the same pool. We have another pool here. And again, an 8-inch wall um, sits at the end. And then the pool is inboard of that. So I am going to... Um, Let's select, select the floor, confirms that we have it right there. We're going to edit the boundary. Now it's pink, and we could see it better. There, there's the top line. So now we could move existing lines, delete them, alter them, or add um, lines, which is what we'll be doing. So I'm going to jump into the um, offset, the offset command. And once I do that, this comes up. I just um, ran through this once by myself. And so 8 inches is the number I want. I put it in already. And I'm just going to... And once I come to this, once, once I hover right on this guy, you can see that dashed line appearing. So right now, I'm on the top side of the line. So that line's going north. If I just pit, bring my cursor down a little bit, you can, you can just about see that dashed line showing up on the south side. And I'm going to do that. Click. And there it is. Same on this click on the inside so now we have our two lines um, eight inches inside so that's one corner of the pool and this corner we will have to I okay we'll do that one by I and then while we're in this command let's just come over here and let's just bring this line in too did that work I don't know if that worked one more time offset and there it is okay there it is Okay, so that's eight inches in. We don't have a, anything to offset down here, so that's that's all we have to work with. Um, let me just let's just do this one while we're here. So now I'm going to just select that line. I'm going to pull it right down here. So that's going to be our corner that we're going to go from. And then when I when I cut this when I cut this pool out, it will be exactly eight inches. It will leave me exactly eight inches for that wall that's coming on top. Okay. So now we could go back to our boundary line. This time we will go to the rectangle tool, and I will start right here, snapping to it, and I will just zoom in right to here. Highlighted lines overlap. Lines may not form closed loops. Okay, that's something you're going to see a lot, um, and that's okay. We have a line here. So this, this construction line that I made, that offset line, we have to get rid of that. That is a line that is not contributing to a closed loop, so I just erase that. And that's the kind of stuff that confuses Revit when it's trying to create a um, trying to create a closed boundary. So one more rectangle. We'll start on the inside. And we'll come down to here. We'll zoom in. And again, same war warning. That's okay. No worries. And then we have one. 8 inch offset line right there that we need to get rid of and we have another one that's underneath this pool and there it is so I'm just just by hovering on it um, well actually that might be lying let's see what happens if I erase that no that was part of my pool line that was part of my pool line right there that I erased that's my original um, but this one's in the same in the correct location anyway so um, I'm just gonna select and select and let those join. So now that was my original eight eight inch offset, and it became my um, it became my corner of my rectangle. So I think we're good. I think we cut two holes successfully. I am going to give it the green light, 
and let's see what happened. So in the elevation, I don't expect anything would have changed. We should not be able to see those pools when we look at the south elevation. This is just going to look the same way that it did. So let us go to, let us, um, we don't, the template as it comes does not come with a three-dimensional view. So let's get that. So we come right up here to this little house here, and we could go to default 3D view. And i um, sure we could save the project as we go. That's always a good thing to do. And there it is. And then we jumped right into the 3D view. So once I clicked on that here in the, in the property browser, this view appeared. And this looks very much like what we're looking for. So holding the wheel down, I could pan, shift, and hold the wheel down. And this looks pretty good. Let's spin around. Let's just take a look here. So that's my little 8-inch wall, and that is my 8-inch um, little piece there as well. So that looks pretty good. And let's do one more. So finish floor, and let's cut sections. Always need sections to confirm things. And for draw for drawing in Revit, you will need a lot of sections, you know, or or you move your sections around as as you work on them. Um, so that's my section tab up there, and I am going to I'll just cut one right through the pool. And it just came in as such, and it is looking to my right. Here are some arrows, so I could flip it to my left, look in either direction. doesn't really make a difference at this point. There's not so much information. And as I flip it, um, this dashed line, this dashed line represents what, what is seen in the section. So if there's too much stuff back here that's confusing the section, we could actually pull it in. So if your section's not displaying what you expect it to, um, come back to the plan, click on this, click on the on the section arrow, and you'll see um, what exactly is in the um, the plan or not. So that should be fine. And I think we could just double click right on that, and then it'll jump us right into our section. And let me just just jump back one more time, actually, to the finished floor just to see what we're seeing. So we are cutting through here and looking to our right. So we sh I expect to see. Um, floor here, then we have a space where the pool is, and a little more floor there. And so, yep, if we zoom in, we got better line weights. And there we see our cut floor, pool, lighter lines, and dark lines for that piece on the right. So this is, this is I, I know that I'm taking it quite a while doing it, but it's a super important point is that after you draw something, um, often you're going to need numerous views to draw it, but then when you're done drawing it, um, when you're done drawing it, then you need to review it in several views as well. Okay. Okay, let's jump back to our review sheet and just make sure that we're covering everything. So from the top, we talked about um, going into the sketch-based mode there, drawing in two dimensions. We talked about our trim commands. We went into the architectural tab, and then we went, jumped into that sketch mode. The existing drawing became an underlay. We had the green light and red light to um, finish our editing mode or to cancel it. Um, sketches, so those, those drawings, the sketch modes of the pools and the overall floor must all be complete and nice and tight. If um, if there's any openings, then it's not going to, it's going to create an error message and not be able to complete it. So zoom in and take care, just like CAD. Um, and then all the active tools show up in that modify pool panel. And we went with the boundary lines. We also used the rectangle tool. If we had um, walls in place, um, either in CAD or in Revit, we could also just snap the floors right to the walls, which is nice. We'll get to this on our second um, project. Okay and selecting the floor from the correct floor level hover the mouse near the wall um, and tab floor until it's highlighted so again that, that just kind of speaks of the um the difficulty sometimes of selecting things oh i'm in a i'm in a mode there that's a, so sometimes when you're stuck so that the red light green light was a problem there um, typically selecting is just kind of coming over and hovering nearby um, and again, I reviewed the hitting the tab as, as you're here, so you could see I come in right near the wall, and then I am tabbing, and it is jumping back 
um, let me move this guy, and you can see down here at the bottom left at my command line. So you can see the difference. So now I am, um, right now the command line down here says, keep an eye down there at the right, it says um, floor generic. And I hit tab, and now it's moving to the JPEG. So again, just like I discussed in my intro video, um, finding things is not always the easiest, but that tab command helps. Okay. Um, cutting out the pools. So again, then we just select the floor, and then we hit that edit boundary, and then we're back into that mode. All right, so now let's build the roof, all right? And then we'll be done with this. So building the roof. So you can see right here, this nice image of the pavilion that this roof has a nice little um, detail, little um, bump out part. It's not just one solid piece, it's actually a little bit bigger. So I'm going to call that a 10 inch roof, 10 inch thick roof, and then there will be a 2 inch thick roof that sits on it. Okay, so the 10 inch generic floor must be placed 10 inches above the bottom of the ceiling. So why don't we start with that, all right? A 10 inch generic floor being placed 10 inches above the ceiling level. So if I go into elevation, just to explain that one more time, let's take a look at our south elevation. So if I draw a floor and I and I say go to the bottom of the ceiling, it's going to come in down here. So I'm going to say plus 10 inches so that it comes in on top. Okay, so let's go back to our floor plan. This is where we draw and we are drawing a roof <clears throat> on this section. So we see the dashed lines. I'm going to draw this one, and I will let you draw this one. And it's drawn the same exact way. So that dash line <coughs> represents it. Okay, so let's go to floor, architectural floor, generic floor. Now let's see, do we have a 10-inch floor? We do not have a generic 10-inch floor. Okay, not a problem. Let's edit the type. So I'm here. I'm going to edit the type. <coughs> And I am going to edit the, go to the structure. Actually, let's duplicate it first. Duplicate, generic, 10 inch wall. Okay. And then let's go to the structure and edit it. <clears throat> so when we get into more complex, not generic, um, more complex real um, wall types and floor types will be built up of all different elements here. You would see the plywood, you would see the joists, everything that makes up a wall could be listed here. Generic means we're not talking about any specific um, materials. So we have our structure, which is one inch, one foot thick. I'm going to change that to our 10 inches and say OK. And OK again. So we have a generic 10 inch floor by title and we have a 10 inch. <clears throat> thickness. So that all looks good. And here we are. Okay, so we've created our 10 inch thick floor. And we are still in the floor creation um, command. So we are here. And we are going to draw the roof. So that is a simple rectangle. And we want to review where it's going. So we are in the finished floor floor plan so it thinks by default that that's where we want to draw but that's not the case um, we need to draw there because that's where our plan is but we need to have, shoot the elements up to other or shoot them up or down to other places down to the pool down to the base up to the ceiling so let's select that and we want this 10 inch floor to come in above that level so we're going to add 10 inches to its location. And then let us draw it. That's the next step. So I'm going to zoom right in. I'm going to draw it right on that line. And down to this corner. And I'm going to snap to my. All right. And that should do it. It should do it. We look good here. Let's give it the green light. And. Let's see what happened. Um, so let's take a look at 3D. And that roughly looks like what we expected to happen. Let's take a look at the elevations. That would be our south elevation that we've been using. And there it is. Very nice. So it is sitting above the ceiling line. And that's only because that 10 inches has been added. Otherwise, <clears throat> if there was no offset, it would be down below the line. <clears throat> so floors by default come in below the line. 
and we're we're treating this floor as a ceiling um, okay so let's do that one more time now um, and let's actually let's take a look at section I always like to check things in section so we are here's our section and we are not cut through so we, we just drew this um, roof so there's really nothing to see in section um, nothing that we had we didn't see in elevation but I, I don't I don't create tons of these things but I usually have one in each direction and then I just move them around while I'm in, in the process of constructing constructing something I don't need uh, so many sections that it's cluttering up my project browser or anything like that and then we could click on and so here um, we just clicked in and we just see one thing sitting there so this box here is the um, building section box essentially and it, it, it is the um, the view so when we start setting up pages this is going to matter more but, but if you're not seeing something it's probably because it's this box is hiding it so there we go okay so there's our floor and there's our section here's our other section which is going in the opposite direction all right let's jump in and do a little more for this um, floor now or for the ceiling so now I can't see this ceiling I can't see the ceiling here I drew it here but I can't see it let's go up to the bottom of the ceiling and let's see if we can see it there it is okay good okay so how to draw this next one so let's take a look so now I want a two inch thick generic floor place 12 inches above the ceiling so what that is is going to be that little two inch piece sitting right up there and I want it to step out a little bit I want it to be um, have a little bit of a reveal you would call that so I'm going to um, let's see how this is going to work let's try let's go with um, floor again let's edit this floor duplicate it let's make it our generic two inch floor edit the structure again bring that down to two inches say okay so now we have a two inch so as we as we build these different types of floors they're all going to remain here for us so we have our 12 or 10 and now we have our two we are going to the bottom of the ceiling but we want to come up a foot by my calculations all right so now this is all set let us draw so this line should represent our existing our existing roof and what I want to do is offset this one out so here's our offset command I'm just going to do it two inches and let's take them out let's see if this is going to cooperate I did that one and it did work I just didn't zoom in enough but click out good Let's come down to this corner, click, click, good. Then I could take these and I could delete them. So I traced the original one, the original roof, and then I offset it out two inches. And let's see what that does for us. So we got a two inch floor, a foot above the bottom of the ceiling. Okay, and I'm drawing that at the bottom of the ceiling plan. Let's give it the green light. I usually check for 3D first and let's zoom in. And that looks pretty good. Let's, let's look at it from the underside. Now we're looking straight up at that roof edge. And there's our little 2 inch reveal. That looks good to me. Okay, so that roof is complete I am going to let you finish the other roof so this roof over here this is over the little bathroom kind of office area that would be built in the same fashion and we could see that in our floor plan so let's go to our finished floor so I built the big guy and here comes the other one so right there we'll have a 10 inch roof thick roof with another two inch piece and we could also put set this whole piece on a um, on a plinth um, let's, let's, why don't we do that? So we could just set it at any, um, any, any, um, width and thickness really. So let's jump into here. There's our floor. Okay. 
Are we coming here? Floor architecture floor good. Let's put a let's put a big thick 12 inch generic floor underneath this whole thing. So where would that be? Is the question. Let's just jump right back to here to our cheat sheet. So our if we want to draw this, the sidewalk, we are going to draw it. We want it to come in at under the base level. All right, so we shouldn't care about the math. That shouldn't be necessary. But basically, we're going to sit down here under the base level. So I am just going to draw a big rectangle. Um, so I am on the finished floor. I have my 12-inch floor. Then I'm going to send this down to the base. I'm going to draw a big rectangle. Um, really more for purposes of rendering. Let's just make it nice and big. There it is. <clears throat> just so it looks like it's sitting on something. And then let's just... Nope. So now it has an, a height offset. So that's why we always need to review and always glance back here. Um, so it's going to the base level. So this this offset came from my previous one when I was making that two-inch roof. So sometimes it just stays populated. So very, very important. And when something doesn't work out the way that you think it should, select it and come back here and review. This is not having numbers set correctly. Um, give it the green light. That is culprit number one for things not being the way they should be. And there we go. So let's just take a look. It's your three levels. Take a look in section. So I just like to jump to the floor plan and jump right into the section. And there, there's our base, the sidewalk, sitting underneath our baseline. Good. Finished floor. Good. Oh, and actually, let's... Oh, we didn't draw the um, the pool. Let me just draw the pool quickly. Um, so let's draw that pool. One last thing. So we can make this 12 inches and... So, no, we do not want to edit the boundary, so I'm just going to get out of that. I was looking up at the top there. So, let's go one more time. Floor, floor. And a 12-inch floor is fine. Let's send it to the pool, however. It should not need an offset. We'll do a rectangle. And we should be able to zoom right in here. So, as I zoom in, we see these little gray lines that are reacting when I come on them. That's the existing floor. So right here, that's just the JPEG. Nothing's happening. But right here, that's the existing floor lines. So I'm going to draw this pool, the bottom of the pool right on top of that. One click. Two click. Okay. I'm going to give it the green light. So it is at the pool level. It's a 12-inch thick. Good. Now I'm just going to pick up my section, move it back here, and now, now we should see the whole story. Actually, I'm going to jump into this one, then we'll really cut through the whole, the whole piece. There we go. So here's our pool. So there's the edge of the floor. That's the pool line beyond. And then if you were to step into the pool, you would step down and stand on there. Okay, and then we could see our, and there's our nice roof up above okay so left to right we see the pool down at the right right there pool at the left so you need to add the floor of this pool and you need to build the roof down at this edge okay all right and i think we covered everything then in the review sheet we covered all of that this discusses the dimensions for building that roof and we already discussed um sections all right so a lot of information um i know i just wanted to kind of walk you through at least half of that by yourself but i think you'll have it at this time okay good luck